They don't wanna see me push the button when I'm spinning. They don't wanna see me living while they so offended. I don't understand it. They don't wanna see me spinning. They don't wanna see me written out the penthouse while they rather see me spinning. Wham, wow, me people. Welcome to another episode of my world. If this is your first time on my channel, I would like to invite you to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay updated with the latest video. So today on this episode, you know, I had the pleasure was to work with another Afro Latina. She have her own story was to share with us. She gave me the opportunity to work with her. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And the same amount of love that you guys show to my channel, I would want you to do the same for her as well. Because, you know, this is what we're here for. We're here to help each other grow, right? Check it out. Landita the Great ask who danced the best punta if it was Belize, Catrachos, La Buga, or Nikas? Belize. Yes. <laughs> Belizeans is the best punta. Belizeans be killing it. I love Belizeans. Like, one thing about Belizeans, like, a lot of them, they sleep more grateful than we do. Okay. <laughs> so, Franklin Jackson asks, ¿Cuál es la mejor comida garifuna, el tapado o cassava? La mejor comida en la cultura garifuna is machuca. Machuca. Machuca is, is mashed up plantain and coconut soup that has seafood in it. That's the quickest way for me to say it. So, if, so you would rate it from 1 to 10, you'll give it a 10? Oh, hell yes. And a thousand. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, since since you said that, right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a Honduran restaurant and I'm going to order machuca and I want to see what, what it's all about. That's if they even have it. A lot of Honduran restaurants don't have machuca because it's, it's a generational food. Like, they have... And there are restaurants they be having like well, contajadas or like parianas, but they never have machuca. So, um, Dexter Lab asks, are the pupusas better there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can't nobody tell Salvadorian pupusas. Okay. No. <laughs> Salva Salvador people you know, is still number one. So, we are talking about what is the influence um, of the Jamaicans in the Garifuna culture and this question was asked by Walter. Well, I don't think there's really a Jamaican influence. I just think it's more so African influence. We are Caribbean though, we're from St. Vincent originally. So um, there's a very heavy Caribbean influence, but not Jamaican per se. It's, it's more so African slash Caribbean influence. Okay, Dexter, there is your answer. Franklin asks, what um is some differences between the Garifuna culture, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua? The culture is consistent throughout the country that we're in. It's just a matter of how celebrated they are or how respected they are. Like in Belize, it's way more respected. Like Belize has a um the Garifuna Settlement Day is actually recognized like as a national holiday. In the rest of the countries, it's, it's not like Belize is more so big on the culture. Like it's just respected amongst the mestizos as well in Belize. Because like in Honduras, they call Garifuna culture Honduran culture, and it's not. But in Belize, like they actually call it Garifu culture. In Gua Guatemala, it's like basically the same as Honduran. So Kai is asking you, have you been to Saint Vincent? I have not. I have not been to Saint Vincent. I've not been to here. I mean, I'm going next year though. Okay, good. It's expensive. Have you seen the documentary called You Remain? I have. I've seen You Remain, and then we have a movie too called Garifuna and Peril. I feel like every single Garifuna person has seen that. But yes, I have. I haven't. I don't even know what it is. This is my first time hearing about the name. Did I say it right? You Remain? <laughs> what, yeah, you did. What does it mean? It means homeland in Garifuna. Oh, that's pretty cool. What is arrival day look like in Honduras? It's lit. It's lit. If you're in the Garifuna Pueblo, if you're like in like San Pedro Sula, like Tegucigalpa, like somewhere where there's no really Garifuna people, then it's just another day. But in Honduras, it's lit if you're in a Pueblo. In Belize, it's lit. What are your thoughts on Afro Latinos or, you know, like people like us, like me and you, that speak both language, know where we come from, but like you hear them say that they're not black? It kills me because it's like, what? Why wouldn't you want to be black? Like, you're obviously black. Like, let's say Dominican, for example. Like, they be just as black. They be darker than you, darker than me. I'm not black. 
as Dominican, I know black, like it makes me sad because like, why wouldn't you want to be black? Like, what is it about being black that you don't be yourself as that when you literally are, your hair texture is like it, your skin is like it, like you black, like it's okay to be black. It makes me sad and it shows like the self hate and there's a lot of it. When you go back to Honduras and you speak Spanish to them, do they tell you that you don't, your, your Spanish is don't sound Honduran anymore? Uh, Yes, I don't know if you've seen in my comments on TikTok, that's a lot of the things, that's the main comment that I get all the time, is that dance don't that and then you don't speak, like, your Spanish is Americanized, they be like, oh, you have the yo no sabo, like, <laughs> yo no sabo. <laughs> my Spanish, I speak Spanish, I'm fluent, it's just a matter of the fact that my accent isn't, like, I don't have a Honduran accent, which is okay, but at the same time, me, because they be like, oh, you're not Honduran, speak Spanish. At the end of the day, I can, and it just shows that, like, y'all are so uneducated about the Garifuna culture because in Garifuna, we have our own language called Garifuna. They need to be asking me if I speak that and whether I do or not. That doesn't make me any less or more Honduran or Garifuna. Okay? So, so you speak three languages? I don't speak Garifuna. No, no, no. Garifuna is hard as hell. Okay, then <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. But do you understand it, though? I, I know some words. I know some phrases, but no. No, I don't. I don't speak it. I'm trying to learn it though. Like the only thing I know. Thank you, Asadamain. Good morning, is Witi Banasi. Good night, is Witi Gunyong. How are you, is Idivinya? And then I know some numbers, but <laughs> grief was really hard. I don't know nothing. So you still winning me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said that you're fluent in Spanish, right? Meaning like you're hundred percent or you're eighty. I feel like the only way you 100 is if you was born and raised in the country and you've been there. Like, I feel like that's the only way you 100 is if you were native. So, no. I'll give myself an 80, 85. So, what kind of discrimination have you come across, like, in your country and being outside of your country? I'll speak about being in the States first. So, like, for example, um, whenever I go to this Honduran restaurant that's, like, 15 minutes away from where I stay, like... I'm looked at as an outsider. When you're not even just being grief now, when you're Afro Latino, period, and you're like black, like me, and you're not like light skinned with like curly hair, like you're looked at as just black. Like you're looked at as like the N word. Like you're African American yeah. in their eyes. So like when I go into a Spanish speaking area, and there's under little mestizos, they come to me, they speak English to me. But like when I go and talk to them in Spanish, they still respond back to me in English because they think, oh, like, she's just someone that's learning Spanish or something. Like, they don't realize that, like, I'm like you. Like, we're from the same country. So, in regards to discrimination in Paris, it's large, it's loud. They're trying to take our ancestral lands. They do not want the Garifuna people there. We currently have five Garifuna leaders that are missing because the, um... Right now, like, say, right now as we speak? They've been missing since July. Wow. Uh -huh. They've been missing since July. They think they found a body of one of them, but they haven't confirmed it yet. But yeah, there are five groups from the leaders that have been missing for over three months. And no one's talking about it. Like, no one's talking about it. I never, at all. Heard, about, about I it never heard of that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. When you guys celebrate yeah, Independence Day? Yeah, November 22nd, 1787. And, um, yeah. It's only like in Honduras, it's only celebrated like in the pueblos, but Belize is celebrated more widespread because it's actually like a holiday. What part of Honduras have like the most black people? Sambo Creek is the pueblo that has the most Garifuna people. No, I think Sambo Creek is a Garifuna pueblo. That has the most Garifuna people in Honduras. But another one, the big, like the more major ones, Seva. Rio Tinto, Naguan, Bahamar, Masca, Santa Fe, that's the one where I'm from. The Roatan has a good amount of great from the people too. So in your country, like in Honduras, do they speak like Creole too? Like, like you know, like how them like saying that we sound in like Jamaican? The only place in Honduras where I've heard that they talk about is Roatan. That's the only place. But then again, Roatan is an island, so it would make sense for them to speak as well. Can you tell me just a little bit of story, like of how you guys got, how the Garifunas get from wherever they are to Honduras? Of course. 
So we originated from West Africa on the Cape Trade to North America. Our ship crashed in St. Vincent and we intermixed with the Caribbean Arawak Indians. So that's how the Gary the people became the ethnicity. That's how we became a thing. The British came and tried to enslave us. Our leader, Joseph Chatoye, he um, like led the battle, but they ended up killing him and they killed the majority of our people. And we were exiled to the North Island. So we're the only black people to never have been enslaved. Um, so a small majority of Caribbean people are still in St. Vincent, but the majority of us were exiled to Roatan in Honduras. And then from there, we migrated to Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua. So yeah, that's how we ended up in St. Vincent. So we've been in St. Vincent, well, we've been in Honduras since 17, well, we've been in Central America period, since 1787. Thank you. That was pretty dope. Do you think, um... African Americans from the from here, right? Obviously, look at us the same as black. I live in Virginia, like the South. So Virginia is somewhat the South, but I'm from New York. So like in New York, there's Afro Latinos everywhere. Not even just Afro Latinos. There's immigrants. I'll say everywhere. Everybody an immigrant. But when you come down here, and there really isn't none, and then they see a black person that's not from the U.S., they're like, what? And then like when you try to educate them about like for me example when i try to educate them about being very funny and then when i try to explain to them like my ancestors we were never like they were never enslaved they don't look at me as the same like they'd be like what like so you think you're better than me that's not what i said <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's not what i said like some of them just like it's hard for them to understand the fact that black people could come from somewhere other than the states do you ever come across people telling you that um you're not afro latina you're just like afro caribbean or want you to say afro caribbean instead of afro latina i've had people people try to tell me about myself all the time it's ridiculous like i like i've had so many people tell me to get a dna test to prove it to them i've had people tell me that i'm just african i've had people tell me that i'm not honduran i've had people tell me i'm not great for now because or like they'd be like you're not a real honduran because like i wasn't born and raised in honduras and still don't currently live in honduras or i'm not real great for now because i don't speak great for now like i've had so many people try to tell me about myself like, for example, a lot of Garifuna people, they don't choose to identify as Afro-Latina or Afro-Latino. Some of them just be like, I'm just Garifuna, that's it. I'm not Hispanic, I'm not Afro-Latino, I'm just Garifuna, which is their prerogative. I personally identify as Hispanic and Afro-Latina because we've been in Honduras for centuries. So I think that have been like my questions then for the day. But I would still want you to like let the people them know like where they can find you. Of course. Um, you can find me. My personal Instagram is n.exquisite, n.exquisite. My business page, however, is Amor J. Shelco, which is A M O R J C H E L L E C O. I'm going to show a quick product real quick. I do sell lashes. I haven't launched it. I'm on October 23rd, but these have gotten so much attention. But yeah, I haven't even done a reveal yet. I just show the boxes. I'm gonna show them on October 19th. And then I launch, my website launches October 23rd. Thanks a lot, you know, and I'm gonna make sure like I add all your information in the description as well. All right then, muchas sure. gracias. Alright then, nada. <laughs> bye bye. Life too fly to be stressing. Stressing. Don't trouble away and take your blessing. Blessing. Every day is a new lesson. Blessing. I'm not perfect, but I am progressing. Blessing. Always shoot my shot, they step up, then I fade away. Wait. Music like the only how to get me through the day.